Uh, the precision, the dense, and the homogeneity of Gaia DR2 astrometry and photometry are unprecedented. Uh, from those data, one does not build just one, but many different Gaia uh, HR diagrams, de depending on the stellar population selections. Uh, we selected both field and cluster stars, open and globular clusters, and we look for variations of the Gaia HR diagram with age, metallicity, and kinematics. This release uh, being still an intermediate one, a number of filters has to be applied to the astrometry and photometry to obtain clear HI diagrams, and we detail those in this paper. So on the first slide, you see the HR diagram of sources within 200 parsec with low extinction selection. So the red color scale represents the square root of the stellar density. The correspondence of the Gaia colors in effective temperature are provided on the top axis, together with the equivalent spectral types. The absolute method in the G-band is provided on the vertical axis, together uh, with its absolute luminosity equivalent on the right. So you can see um, how thin the main sequence is for FGK stars, how it gets thicker uh, for late K, early M, and then thin again. So you also see the imprint of the binary sequence all along the main sequence. At the bottom of the main sequence, you have the brown dwarfs. So we observe M, L, and T type brown dwarfs, which are particularly interesting to study uh, um, by combining also with the two mass near infrared colors. And you have for this a cross match with two mass and other uh, external catalogs provided directly within the Gaia archive. And uh, so with these uh, near infrared colors, we also observe uh, halo born dwarfs. On this uh, 200 parsec uh, HR diagram, the red um, giant branch looks small uh, on this scale. But uh, when you zoom in, you see that uh, actually there are lots of details here. A sharply pronounced red clump, the secondary red clump, the RGB bump, and the RGB bump, which was not uh, seen in the TIGAS HR diagram. Um, zooming on the white dwarf sequence, it is so thin that you actually see for the first time the split between the hydrogen and the helium white dwarf in an HR diagram. So we also detect stars belonging to the very rapid phases, which moves um, an end of life red giant to post AGB, then central planetary nebula, before falling to the white dwarf cooling sequence. So we um, also work with open clusters for which we derive new memberships and distances for selected clusters spanning a range of different ages. For the closest clusters, we actually resolve the cluster's deaths along the line of sight. Uh, the cluster sequences are extremely thin, with the binary sequence well seen slightly above it. We compare the sequences with isochrones, and we derive the edges of the clusters through isochrone fitting. That leads to a composite HR diagram using 32 open clusters, color-colored with, with H, where you see nicely the change of the turn-off with H, um, as well as the change at the bottom of the main sequence, the youngest uh, ones being slightly above the others. We also have an equivalent composite HR diagram using globular clusters, where you see the strong change of the red giant brown shape with metallicity. The Gaia data are so extended that we can illustrate how the field HR diagram uh, varies with kinematics, the younger stars having cooler kinematics, while the oldest ones have a hotter kinematics. And in particular, for the classical uh, halo cut, um, we see for the first time a very clear split of the HR diagram into two different sequences, very thin sequences, that we associate um, through isochrone fitting to a difference of about one dex in metallicity, which is in agreement with recent uh, results from spectroscopic surveys. So to conclude, Gaia opens a full new area for studies based on HR diagrams for both stellar evolution and stellar population studies. Mm -hmm.